Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here and it's a new month so I want to go over, I think I got eight books that I want to cover for my TBR for the month of June here. It's a little bit more than I normally do in a TBR but they're actually all fa fairly short for the most part so I think I'll actually be able to get through, I don't know, hopefully six or seven of them. That's kind of like my goal. I've been doing pretty good getting like four out of five but yeah let's just uh, go ahead and get started. So the first two here our philosophy books and for those who missed my video a couple maybe a week or two ago I'll put it up there about how I started a philosophy discord server and we're gonna be reading philosophy books and stuff I'll leave a link down below to the server and everything it's actually fairly active already which I'm really pleased about but our first group read is going to be Plato's Symposium right here I just happen to have the uh, Oxford World Classic one though um, in the discussions uh, the Hackett uh, publisher or can't remember Hackett Classics uh, the translator Nehemus uh, did a really good job apparently that's what a lot kind of the consensus is <laughs> in the server and everything but anyways we're going to be reading Plato's Symposium which is a bunch of guys in ancient Greece getting together getting drunk and talking about what is love and stuff so that'll be interesting for sure and then I got last month I picked up this book for like two dollars um, I have no idea it's just like a little kind of over I'm not how actually I'm not 100% sure how much of an overview it could possibly be um <laughs> for a uh, hundred pages or so but anyways it's supposed to be all about you know kind of Plato's thought and just kind of giving you a nice overview I guess of his like philosophical thinking and stuff but it's a uh, part of a series called the past masters this one's Plato by R.M. Hare um it was pretty well regarded and I figured you know for two dollars and like a hundred pages surely I can chew through that one so hopefully I start kind of priming my brain for Plato and stuff and like I said if you're interested in philosophy or anything like that, definitely check out the server. Like we got a whole bunch of conversations on a zillion topics already, so it'll definitely be interesting for sure. Uh, next up, I got a couple medieval history books. I do feel like my medieval history reading has just not, <laughs> not been going super great for whatever reason for Historathon. But this one is uh, my next one that I plan on reading is Living by the Sword, Weapons and Material Culture in France and Britain, 600 to 1600 uh, by Kristen Newshow. And I've only read the first uh, like 10 pages or so, but it's all about sort of how, from what I'm gathering, swords and armaments and stuff. Uh, how not only were they, you know, useful like in battle or um, for fighting with and all that kind of stuff, but also how it displays status in different ways, um, like what different kinds of swords meant, you know, when you're walking around in public or, uh, you know, visiting like your liege lord or anything like that, kind of stuff like that. So I think it'll be uh, fairly interesting. I'm hoping like it kind of covers the whole gamut of the 600 to 1600. I'm afraid that it's going to be kind of just really uh tail end heavy like you know with the very like late middle ages when you know you have like kind of the super ornamental plate armors and uh gilded swords and stuff like that so i'm kind of hoping it covers the whole the whole spectrum of that time period but like i said it'll be kind of interesting learning just all about different kind of arms and armor and stuff that people actually like use there's there's a few photographs and stuff not a ton um no plates per se but uh, it does look like a lot of text, so I'm hopefully, like I said, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about it, but if it pans out, I think it'll be a really interesting read on a topic. Uh, next up, I wanted just something like nice and easy, so I'm going with one of my uh, Osprey publishing books, and this one is Knights at Tournament by Christopher Gravitt, and the plates are by Angus McBride, who is super famous uh, for his um, historical like wargaming plates and all that kind of stuff. But this book is all about, you know, when you have like you know, the uh, chivalric games and stuff, uh, where you're jousting and doing the melees and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of illustrations, a lot of photographs, a lot of archaeological stuff. Um, there's also uh, diagrams and illustrations based on like different descriptions uh, that we have from like the um, written record, things like that. There's probably going to be manuscript stuff as well. But these books are super, super historically accurate. Plus the plates are also really accurate. Um, to the best of like our abilities, what they actually like look like, you know, we're wearing and using and all that kinds of stuff. So it's just really fun, uh, fun. Plus the plates also, like if you go to the back of the books, usually the plates will have like a number associated with them. And then it'll have a description of all the stuff in the plate and like where the illustrator got the inspiration for, you know, that kind of armor or whatever, what the barding on the horse or anything like that. But, um, I don't know. It just feels like a, kind of like a more fun one, like I, in the sense of like it's, you know, since it's like, you know, the games festival and the tournament and stuff, it's just a little bit more over the top per se. Uh, anyways, I just thought it'd be really interesting. 
So now let's move on to some nature books. And at the end, I have an arc that I'm really excited to learn about and start reading as well. But leave a comment down below what you are reading this month and what you're hyped for. I'm always on the lookout for good recommendations. So next up, we got Around the World and 80 Birds by Mike Unwin. And this one's illustrated by Ryuto Miyaki. And this was one I picked up for Indie Bookstore Day just because... I just, I don't know, the cover really sold me. I had Around the World in 80 Trees as well, and I was like, I'm only going to take one of the, the 80 day ones, and I decided to go with the bird one just because I like the illustrations better. Uh, but each bird gets basically a two page spread, and it covers the whole, uh, pretty much the whole planet, so I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. I'm not going to learn like tons on each one, but I'm hoping maybe there's some sort of thread kind of going throughout the book i've only read the first like five or six birds so definitely looking forward to that one this will be just like a nice calming read i feel like reading it outside now that i got like the gardens going and stuff i think that'll be really cool as well next up we have thor hansen's hurricane lizards and plastic squid the fraught and fascinating biology of climate change this is actually gonna be a reread for me i was sent uh this by basic books a long time ago and i read it and then i never ended up doing the review for it because I'm bad, <laughs> bad like that. Um, so I'm gonna be doing um, a reread of it for sure so I can give it like a proper review. But it's all about how different animals are coping with climate change. Um, for example, uh, like hurricane lizards, the anoles uh, down in kind of the islands, you know, south of Florida, all those countries down in there. There's a bunch of anole lizards, you know, in the Caribbean and different areas that have been evolving like different toes and stuff pretty rapidly to kind of adapt with uh like different hurricanes that are you know kind of pummeling through the area i used to live in florida so i remember that was a 2004 2005 season when we had like 20 whatever 30 hurricanes or something like that um but it's just interesting seeing how or excuse me seeing how different animals are trying to cope with those different stressors as well and i really enjoy thor hansen stuff i think this is like the third or fourth book of his that i've read definitely encourage you to read buzz or seeds um if those topics sound interesting to you as well uh next up is one i didn't quite get to for springathon and it's lost antarctica by james mcclintock uh, adventures in a disappearing land this is uh the, i think it was like the fourth nature one i didn't quite finish it i Got about halfway or so and it's all about how the author is an antarctic scientist but all the logistics and like all the hassle and red tape you gotta, and gotta go through just to get to antarctica to like kind of fund the expedition keep everyone safe during the expedition everything like that and how research actually is just you know you always got that extra layer of everything just because it's so cold it's so dangerous you're so isolated there's just like an extra level of stress basically to every step that you do um, so it's just kind of been interesting learning, like, kind of all the hurdles you got to do just to really get moving on something like that. Um, and I'm hoping now that a lot of that kind of lo logistical stuff is out of the way, um, like where I'm at in the book, they're actually at Palmer Station and stuff. Um, you know, they, they made it off of the vessel and got settled in and everything. So I'm hoping now the second half is going to deal a lot with, like, how, like, the different research that's actually going on and kind of learning what the results are, how do you interpret it, and also how you actually conduct it, you know, when it's 30 below zero and it just, you know, 50 mile an hour winds and stuff like that. So I've been learning a lot and I'm really glad I'm actually gonna you know, follow through and finish this one. And then lastly, here's one that's coming out in the next couple of days. We got Sing Like Fish, How Sound Rules Life Underwater by Emerina Kingdon. Um, and this has actually got like a textured, I don't know if you can see like the dots in there. It's actually kind of nice, like a textured like dust cover. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but this book is something I want to learn about because I've read a couple different books on like fish and marine life and underwater stuff and everything like that. Uh, different things about the oceans. But I've never really read a whole lot on just fish per se, unless it was actually dealing with like environmentalism with fishing. Um, but I'm hoping I learn a lot about the different senses that fish have. Like for example, they have like an extra sense that a lot of animals don't have like the lateral line thing where they can sort of detect the different pressure gradients. And that's how sort of like big schools of fish can swim together without, you know, running into each other and stuff like that. But it's also about all the sound all the sound that go under that goes on underwater and how fish actually like make noises and like listen to it and interpret it and like react on it and stuff and how you know just sounds underwater like affect their behavior and everything so i don't know it sounded really interesting to me carl safina and cy montgomery and julie perwald all had little blurbs on the back of the cover so i was like uh mark kalansky as well so i was like you know i'm definitely going to be learning a lot from that one uh anything carl safina is like in support of I, he's like one of my favorite nature writers uh cy 
Montgomery as well. So I definitely feel like I'm going to learn a ton. And it's not something I really know much about. Like I'm trying to think and I don't remember ever reading anything about um, like fish in particular. Like making, like you know, always hear about like whale songs and, you know, uh, dolphins echolocating, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think of like, I'm not really, nothing's coming to mind for, for certain on like actual, just like, uh, like, you know, bony fish and stuff like that. Um, doing things like that. So definitely interested in learning a lot. So hopefully seeing like fish by, uh, and Marina Kingdon pans out to be a really good read as well. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And thank you to Crown Publishing for sending me that one as well. So let me know what you think of any of these books, which ones maybe I should read first, uh, in the, this coming month of June. Let me know what you're reading, what you're excited for. I'm always, like I said, I'm always on the lookout, found a great bunch of good recommendations, uh, from you guys in the past so definitely keep them coming and always remember whatever you end up reading in june read victoriously